Another winter in a derelict cottage, but are we ready for it? So sorry I've had no updates for you in like months on the house. It's pretty much been because there have been no massive updates, certainly nothing worth making a video about until recently. We'll go look at that in a wee minute. In the meantime, have you noticed? Have you noticed our lovely new driveway? I mean, it's messy as shit. Let's, let's just pan this way instead. Ah! As you can see, our beautiful new driveway and also our beautiful new log store, courtesy of Dave complete with a pile of crap which is yet to be processed into kindling. So if you were paying attention you would have seen me do my advert for Herb Magic at Sowen in front of this bad boy there a few weeks back. That is all stuff that came from the formerly big pile of crap now slightly less big pile of crap. And yeah okay there are kind of piles of crap everywhere that just how it be when you're renovating on an extremely tight budget everything is useful so you keep everything. Don't worry when it's no longer useful I do make a point of keeping things fairly tidy. Still I'm sure that the frogs and hedgehogs on site are not complaining. Yeah, we've got all this good stuff too. This was some of the stuff that we pulled from the big pile of crap that Paddy gave us a hand with earlier this year. And this was the stuff that was processed when we got some of the big and damaged trees at the back of the house cut down, which by the way, a massive peace of mind. So that was totally worth it. And also the fact that our driveway is no longer going to be the thing that destroys the polo. That was totally worth getting the driveway put in. So it might look as though progress has been slow, but there have been little things happening all along. As I say, none of them in particular was really worthy of a video by itself. But at this time of year, I think it's good to take stock of how prepared you are for winter and get the last of your house in order so to speak. Yeah, and our lovely pathways as well, made from the pebble dash and concrete render, which has been chipped off the external walls of the house. We'll have a look at that now in a second. Big thanks to Mark and Pauline for giving us a hand with that. We're hoping that we won't have such a flooding problem in this part of the field like we did last year. I link it here for anyone who missed that very exciting crack. Yeah, as you can see, the drainage situation should be much better now this year we still get a little bit of water pooling along the sides of the path but we'll at least be able to get to the outhouse slash pump house slash utility room without needing a dinghy. You can see there the perfectly straight line where our new path begins and the old one ends. This hardcore was great for starting out, just for putting the mobile sitting on, but honestly it was hard on the polo and hard to get over with the wheelbarrow and this new layer we've put on top is just massively improving things. By the way, sorry to anyone who was watching out for our repointing workshop. I think initially we announced it for May and then we were going to push it back to July and then we were looking to see could we squeeze it into August or early September. The issue was accessibility to the site had me very, very worried because I was very aware that maybe not everybody who wanted to come down and give us a hand with the repointing on the exterior of the house was going to have full mobility and even getting cars in and stuff like that was a real nightmare. So I wanted to have all of that sorted out before we invited anybody on site. And the job kind of as it does when you're working on a building or renovation project just kind of got delayed and delayed. And by the time we actually got it done, we'd left it a little bit too late in the year to be starting on a repointing project. Once it starts to get really wet, you're kind of fighting a losing battle, at least from the research we've done. So we decided to just hold off on that till next year. But actually, it wasn't that bad a thing. As I say, we're going inside in a second to see what has been discovered in there, which has made us kind of take a step back 
chill a wee bit, reevaluate our plans. But before we go inside, let's take a look at the outside because Dave actually has been working on doing some stuff. And I feel like we can both be proud of that, you know? can see it hasn't been a bad effort considering you know we rather predictably ran out of money and needed to stop and do some more work to replenish and then also Dave has started working away more frequently so like all in all he got the ivy off the house he also got a lot of that pebble dash off whatever we could reach kind of with the ladder he does have scaffolding. We invested in some scaffolding, which is down the other gable. And you can see here, a lot of this has been removed, but we kind of stopped when we got to a certain point because our uh, fascias, these are called fascias, aren't they? They're very, very rottish, and we were afraid that we'd start losing lumps of the house that we can't afford to replace yet if we went the whole way up to the top. It does kind of look in parts. Like the pebble dash might be the only thing holding that on. So I think we live well enough alone for now. As I was saying, we've got the whoop scaffolding here. If I manage to not fall and break my neck. And it's looking gorgeous there where it's been done. Look at that. Isn't it just gorgeous? The whole back of the house. So Dave was working on doing all of that. Telly was working on climbing a tree. And I decided that I'd have a wee go at removing the plaster inside the house. Let me show you what we found. It was only when I said to Dave, right, teach me how to use the SDS drill so that I can start to remove the internal plaster. And here's what we found. The deeper we went from both angles, the more concrete we found. So what does this actually mean? Well, it means that our interior walls, so we've got like a double layer of walls. That's why our walls are so thick. In most places, they are about two foot thick. And that consists of an external wall and an internal wall. And it turns out that our internal walls are not made of stone like we thought, but instead they look to be made of shuttered concrete. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means people put up big boards, they used like steel bars and fixtures and all kinds of things to hold this framework up into place. And then they essentially, like those resin molds you see on Facebook Reels and probably all over TikTok, I wouldn't know because I mold, they just fill that bad boy up with solid concrete. Yeah. So all of our great plans for exposed stone and repointing and lime render inside the cottage have kind of gone by the wayside. We will still have internal sections of exposed stone, but the front and back external walls of the cottage, solid fucking concrete. So my plan was to take off, you know, what I thought was the plaster to expose the stone inside the house. And then I thought over the winter, whilst I was kind of spending a lot of time here inside, that I could start the repointing job myself and I'd have gotten a little bit of practice in before we go to do the outside of the house next year. And then I found out that my plan was total bollocks, as also often happens on building and renovation projects. <laughs> So the advice that we've been given so far really is to put insulation in front of it and then to put some plasterboard on the front of that. And whilst we were researching, Dave came back and said to me that there is such a thing as drywalling that has the insulation attached to it. So we're thinking about doing something like that. We don't want to lose too much space on the inside of the house. And also we're not sure how that would work when it meets doors. Do you know, like what would we do here when it comes to that bit there? Do we have to make the door more narrow. I don't really want to do that. We want to increase accessibility, not decrease it. And I'm also taking bets now on what we're going to find on this part of the fireplace. Is it pure concrete? By the looks of it, probably yes. Although 
on the fireplace around on the other side of this wall in the bedroom is stone. I'm not gonna show you the bedroom because essentially it hasn't changed since the last time I showed you around it other than it's a hell of a lot messier now so yeah we won't be going in there today but I think it's about time I show you you know what the rest of the house looks like just in case anyone got the impression that we had done more than one room we absolutely haven't we got that done last winter You've got camera gear, you've got the old dresser that we're trying to keep. The wardrobes, you know, the clothes constantly need washing because everything in it's kind of going mouldy. And these other two rooms below are still really just somewhere to put the boxes of paperwork, boxes of fabric, boxes of microphones and all the associated leads that a couple of musicians tend to accumulate. We're just kind of keeping all that sort of stuff in these two rooms and trying our best to keep the inside of the house warm and ventilated. We haven't been lighting a fire in this main fireplace which I'm really having to confess to that one because we know what would improve the damp situation inside the house in order to do that but the thing is, we had a big enough job this year sorting out the firewood for ourselves that we're going to need in the bedroom over the winter. And apart from some place to store firewood, the cost of it, if we have to go buy in it in, is just astronomical at the minute. Oh, but sure, look at it. It's grand, you know. Dave is working on just improving the insulation on the pump house a bit this year in case we get a really hard frost like we did last year. We've got all our big trees cut down here so we can sleep peacefully knowing that at least a storm isn't going to be bringing things down on top of us. We've got a really warm, cozy bedroom slash sitting room slash office to live in for the winter. And we are starting to reformulate our plan for how we're actually going to tackle the house. So if any of you have advice on the shuttered concrete, please do leave that in the comments. We just want to hear as many opinions on it from people who have also renovated cottages with stone and shuttered concrete. We still want to put a hempcrete floor in and I assume we'll have to put a few vents in. But apart from that, you know, is it just a case of drywalling, bit of insulation, maybe leaving a cavity between? And then we can start on with stuff like actually getting plumbing and wiring properly set up inside the house. It currently has no plumbing and electric in two rooms only. So that's fine for now. You know, we have the mobile home to cook in to wash ourselves in and it's not going anywhere just yet we've been hard at work getting rid of the damp with dehumidifiers and just making sure that everything is getting plenty of heat and ventilation we weren't really prepared for that last winter because we didn't know what we were in for really we had to get down here and find out what life was going to demand of us before we could solve all those problems but I think we've done a really good job at that now. We're well on our way to doing some really big stuff next year and hopefully we'll be in the financial position to do that. I am pretty much planning on doing a live video. I think I might do it sort of around the end of the month so that it's kind of spooky and I thought maybe we could have nice hot beverages and just a chat about where you the long-time dedicated viewers who have stuck with me through all of the various strands and threads that this channel has explored in the last almost three years. I just want us all to sit down together. I want you to tell me what it is that you want to see. I'm gonna throw some ideas I've had out and see how they land and it'll just be a great way for us to get a proper chat in in real time because I have so many commenters on here who are always saying hello and saying such lovely things and wishing us the absolute best through good times and through bad and I never really get to talk properly with you so I'll give you plenty of notice I'll let you know when it's going to be I mean probably 
on a Thursday evening because that's sort of my upload day. So yeah, stay tuned for more details about that. And in the meantime, I hope you are also ready for this winter. Thank you so much for joining me for this winter is coming special update here at our as yet derelict cottage. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It really helps the channel out. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more fun and witchy renovation adventures because you're not going to want to miss them. Slo nagas banacht, goodbye and good luck to you. And for the end screen, I will leave you with this very satisfying footage of Dave removing the ivy just last week on a particularly spooky day. And a quick but massive thanks to Kristen Murphy and Siga Siga One who joined up for channel membership at Lunasa Level. Mm -hmm.